Hi, my friends. <laughs> Just this cutest little kid out there. Um, I think like two, maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyway, just cute. I love kids. Um, uh, okay, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the concaved, concaved earth. Because um, I didn't really get to finish that uh, on my other video this morning. Uh, so, Lord Stephen Christ is his name. Uh, and also, S.S. 22 is another good um, uh, YouTube channel. And so, uh, anyway, all right. I was trying to explain that concave, not convex. I said convex before, but I meant concave. Uh, if you look at the photography of the earth, it will show you what the whole earth looks like. But what Stephen talks about is that there is a, well, it's also the Bible. You look at Genesis 1. I've already read it to you. So if you prefer just to kind of hear some verses, I talk about, uh, or I don't talk, I'm just reading the Bible. Um, but it talks about the oceans being divided um, by the firmament, and then there's oceans above the firmament. And... Um, Stephen does this really great graph, graphic, and uh, he does several. I think he just is, is a wonderful artist and um, brilliant mind. Um, uh, he, he, he may turn you off a little bit because he talked about, you know, I'm Christ. And I think he's just doing a, a parody on his name. I don't think, you know, there's anything serious about it unless there's some issues that we were not privy to so but I don't know that so I'm not here to judge I just think that he's got great ideas and the way that he explains things and he's you know he has people on his show and he's talked to some folks from NASA and he's you know trying to tell them hey look NASA's just been really not truthful and um, not just NASA but other agencies and other people who had the big bucks to go up and see what's what um so what he's explaining is uh is that there's a glass ceiling and it's a hundred kilometers is all all right so when you watch a space shuttle for example or or pictures of it you'll see that it, you know goes straight up and then the jettis the rockets are jettisoned off and then it goes into stages and you know, rockets and or the, the space shuttle, it'll just um, kind of curve, okay, uh, as it gets above 50 miles. And um, the uh, carbon fiber that is on the nose and under the underbelly and on the wings allow it to slide through that glass at a certain angle, 40 degrees, I believe, and skid through, melt the glass, go through, and then um, it, it's in inner space now, okay? Because above that, those, that inner space is also another glass ceiling, uh, and then above that, ocean, where there are fish and frogs and other things, okay? Uh, that I believe that that was part of the waters from the flood, I also think that it might be where the fish is coming from that have been falling from the sky because we know that hurricanes and tornadoes cannot lift uh, fishes from the ocean up to the sky to dump them, you know, elsewhere. Uh, but on land, you, you'll see a cow or a house or a car or whatever. For some reason, it's different. So... Again, I'm not a scientist. It's not my field. Uh, I'm just going to be talking to you in layman terms. Um, so he kind of equates this concaved earth uh, to a fishbowl. And it's also some a, a term that was used by NASA, you know, the name of a project or something that they were doing. So, um, yeah, okay. Um and the rockets and CERN firing off stuff has really 
pushed this envelope, the, the firmament, maybe poked holes into it, uh, had, uh, destroyed it. I don't know. Destroys our, you know, our firmament, our, you know, our ozone layer for sure. Um, okay. And that there may be several layers of glass so that there is a cloaking me mechanism that we can't see the heavens, we can't see God or Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. Bec and and you'll find that on uh, YouTube there there's experiments done with different lenses and light and so when uh, it's uh, set up just right it becomes like a cloaking mechanism that you can't you can put your hand in front of one of the lenses and light and you won't see a part of your hand for example that's in front of the lens um, and because the Sun and the moon are inside uh, this, uh, you know, this sort of bubble, if you will, or fishbowl. It rotates, the sun rotates, okay, and the moon rotates. <clears throat> and so, you know, it's dark on one side, dark on another. So we, we're thinking that the earth is a sphere, but really it is not. It's not flat, but it's concaved, all right? Um, and he explains very intelligently how he's come to this and 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 so forth and if you read your bible and and he reads it uh it in different videos and stuff as well to explain why he's come up with this you know this theory and um it makes it makes sense to me anyway so i just wanted to just kind of add that um uh, that's you know kind of what i've learned so far um, also that he, he goes into different, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Experiments that have happened. I was just loving the phone rings. I'm trying to do a video today. <laughs> um, it'll pick up. So anyway, uh, M&M, &M, uh, experiment, Mol Molson or something experiment. They dropped a plumb line in a, um, in one mine shaft and dropped another plumb line in another mine shaft and they did experiment and they thought that the ball would you know that they would come together because of the magnetic pull of the earth's core and we you know all the stuff that we've been told but in actuality the balls went up they went up they went away they diverged hmm. so he also talks about the ether being the um, force that is holding everything down, and yet we're poking holes <laughs> in this glass that's holding everything in, and that it's not really gravity. Gravity might be the density material, I'm not sure, but it's the ether that's holding everything down. The earth is not moving. It is the stars and heavens and the clouds and all that stuff that's moving, but it's we're not moving here on earth, which makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Um, trying to think of what else he said. Uh, lots of stuff. I mean, he's got tons and tons of videos. So enjoy his, his you know, channel and... Um, you know, come back, make a comment on mine if you want, or whatever. Uh, again, you know, this is just to kind of enlighten you so that you're not fooled by other men. So that you're not led astray, okay? And, I, hey, you know, as a kid, what are you going to do? You're told this in school. You know, Earth is spherical, it's round, and this is what's, you know, in the Earth, and da 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 And it's just, you know, preached into you, really brainwashing you into all the levels of, you know, and evolution and all of that nonsense is is taught. Uh, and and uh, so, of course, you're going to believe it. Why would you just not believe it? You know, they're the authority. And uh, until you become adult and realize you have free will, that you know 
that you have God in you, you can accept the Lord and let the Lord and the Holy Spirit lead you and teach you and let her give you discernment and understanding and even though I went to church all the time and I heard, you know, I heard the creation story, I believed that story. Um, and then, you know, later I was thinking, you know, well, wait a minute. It is the earth really that old or, you know, are our planets that many light years away? And if so, how does that, you know, how does that jibe with the creation? Why is it not the same? I mean, what they, you know, what's going on that, that they're so off and so i would just go well maybe maybe god when god spoke the earth into existence maybe that is the big bang and i would question it you know because i i didn't know and not that i'm questioning god but i'm just trying to understand you know how things work um but then realizing that's not the case either there was no big bang so going back to the Bible, going just reading the Bible and, you know, and trying to understand. Um, and now, granted, there are things in, that have been interpreted in the Bible that are not correct. Uh, even the story of Adam, you know, it, the way that things were interpreted are not, not correct. God created man and woman in his image. Okay, so anyway, that's, I'm going off another topic, but... Um, you know, things about gay people and, and, and so forth are, are uh, not correct. Okay, the Ethiopian um, eunuch, um, read, you know, you can read an Acts. And just look at my other videos, and I talk all about the, um, um, the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip and, and uh, how God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit accepts gay people. Now, and my friend Tony from God Rules had a little video on transsexuals as well. And I honestly cannot at this time, I'm being honest with you guys, I can't really talk to that or, or uh, get, you know, really give my um, opinion on, on, on that. I just, I know that these people are suffering. I know they feel that when they are born, they're not in the right body. Um, but I also know that God is not a God of confusion, that Satan wants us to be confused and mixed up and, and all of that. And so when it's talking about gender identity, see, I don't mind being a woman. Uh, you know, I, uh, I don't, I never liked wearing dresses when I was younger um, I, I hated when my mom would, you know, mess around with my hair. I'd rather be in blue jeans forever in blue jeans, Neil Diamond, <laughs> and t-shirts and, you know, tennis shoes or whatever, flip-flops, but it gives you planters have fasciitis, so don't do it. Um, but, you know, forever in blue jeans, uh, that's just, it's just comfort. I like comfortable stuff and dresses and getting all dressed up in nylons and in my time period you know it was different okay you know it was like getting yourself into a corset or something i mean it was just a it was ridiculous for poor for girls but there's some girls who like all that and that they're very you know feminine and everything but not me i just never been that way but i didn't mean that i wanted to be a boy okay i i was great at sports i could you know play with the best of them. Uh, I, you know, I, w I went to the Olympic uh, trials in track and field. It's, uh, anyway, that lo another story. Volleyball, you name it. I, I did a lot of great um, things in sports and uh, uh, enjoyed, you know, doing that, but didn't necessarily mean that I wanted to be a guy, okay? Um, the problem that I have and that my partner has is that you have to give yourself shots to can to maintain the sexuality and one of the things that bothers me is messing around with with dna that we're not supposed to do that that i don't mean that hormones are dna but you know it's kind of i don't know it just it just i just wanted to you know mention that that that's something that bothers me so that's it for now love you guys have a great one bye bye